action on the Committee on the Present Danger. Yeah. We're circulating a, a, a letter today to go to the President that calls for individual sanctions, personal sanctions against the leaders of the Hong Kong government. Isn't that part of the uh, Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act? Yes. Okay. Yes. There's a, and, 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 and Marco Rubio has been one of the leaders of this. So there's so much. My point is there's so much that's building up now in the West as more and more attention. Got this. Remember 12 weeks ago, Nobody was even talking about this. Right. Three and four weeks ago, they were barely talking about it. So today, it's the front page of you know it's the front page of every of every newspaper in the world. I want to talk about the uh, Hong Kong Human Rights and Demo uh, Human Rights and Democracy Act. So there's some parts that's n no controversy at all. The parts you talked about put sanctions on individuals. There's one part that uh, requires the review of Hong Kong special status. Yeah, special the, trade status. The special trade status yes. by the state uh, State Department. So yes. about that part, do you think it, if the uh, Hong Kong Policy Act was revoked, Hong Kong special status was revoked, do you think that's punishing the CCP on the expense of the Hong Kong people? I think it's I think it's directly uh, affecting the uh, the CCP. CCP needs a vibrant CCP absolutely needs a vibrant Hong Kong. They need vi Hong Kong vibrant as a capital market. Mm -hmm. They need Hong Kong as a trading. Remember, it's a, one of the largest. Uh, that's why the airport shutdown was so important. The airport shutdown literally shut down the freight ability coming out of Hong Kong. Hong Kong's absolutely necessary for the CCP, particularly given where the economy is, where the trade, where our trade deal is, all of that. So I think that that yes, that is a big one. That's a, that's what we call the nuclear option. On uh, in, on the review of the free st the free trade agreement, the free trade, you know, proposal. If that was pulled, I think that'd be catastrophic to the CCP. I don't know how the CCP would continue to govern because I think that the Chinese economy uh, would go and would basically go into a death spiral, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know how the CCP uh, handles that. Um, so, but that remember, those are the types of things that are being held in reserve uh, as as potential bargaining chips uh, for uh, to make sure that the the protests here and the five demands are at, ultimately met. Do you think that will trigger the collapse of the CCP? I believe that the the, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP is a terror organization. I think it terrorizes the Chinese people. I think it's the only reason the CCP is a terror organization. I think it terrorizes the Chinese people. I think it's the only reason that it's in power is because it has the ability to have uh, the only reason that the CCP is a terror organization. I think it terrorizes the Chinese people. I think that's the only reason that it's in power is because the CCP is a terror organization. I think it terrorizes the Chinese people. I think that's the only reason that it's in power is because it has the ability to have uh, basically to have complete total. It's a it's a surveillance state. It's a totalitarian surveillance state that gets worse every day. Right and more paranoid every day. Its control of the Chinese people is because of that. One thing they have for the legitimacy is the economy. If the economy was to start to collapse, right, because of their actions, not anybody else's collapse, right, because of their actions, not anybody else's collapse, right, because of their actions, not anybody else's actions. I think they would lose any legitimacy they have. And I think the only people, and I've said this for, for, for a long time, 
the only people that can get rid of the CCP are the Chinese people, right? This is a matter for the Chinese people to deal with. And I think that's why Hong Kong is so important because you've seen for the first time really a consistent, since Tiananmen, right, a consistent resistance uh, to their uh, more totalitarian rule. Uh, and I think that's why it's inspired the world. It's inspired the world to pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. I believe that anything that's done uh, with their actions, counteractions that affect their ability to, to, to you know, have a robust economy mm -hmm. uh, ultimately hurts them. But it's, it's that, that is why something that it's, it is a controversial uh, part of this. It's one of the reasons the president hasn't hasn't talked about it or hasn't used it. I mean, President Trump has been real stability here. Mm -hmm. Have you seen how how the CCP has been, you know, from violence and sending in the riot police and sending in obviously people who are not Hong Kong police officers dressed up as riot police, uh, have threatened the PLA, have done the exercises at the stadium and then police, uh, have threatened the PLA, have done the ex police, uh, have threatened the PLA, have done the exercises at the stadium and then police, sending in the riot police and sending in obvious stability here. Mm -hmm. Have you seen how, how the CCP has been, been, you know, from violence and sending in the riot police and sending in obvious obviously people who are not Hong Kong, Hong Kong police officers dressed up as riot police Uh, have threatened the PLA, have done the exercises at the stadium and then, uh, you know, massed uh, personnel carries and others on the border. If you looked at how the CCP's handled this versus Trump, Trump's been very steady. First off, he's been, I think, versus Trump, Trump's been very steady. First off, he's been, I think, over accommodating in the, you know, massed, uh, personnel carries and others on the border. If you looked at how the CCP's handled this versus Trump, Trump's been very steady. First off, he's been versus Trump. Trump's been very steady. First off, he's been, I think, over accommodating in the fact that to say, you know, there's no black hand here from me or the U.S. He's reached out and say, she's my friend. The fact that to say, you know, there's no black hand here from me or the U.S. He's reached out and say, she's my friend. She could solve this in 15 minutes. All he has to do is listen to the protesters. I will have a personal visit. Uh, I think Trump's been pretty, has basically signaled he will fly. He would fly to China or fly to Hong Kong to meet with President Xi. Do you think that's a good idea? I think whatever resolves this for the good of the Hong Kong people is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think the five demands have to be met. We have to go back to the 1997 turnover and to the 1984 agreement. Mm -hmm. I think the Hong Kong people cut a deal that the West basically negotiated through the United Kingdom and everybody agreed to it that for 50 years there would be one country, two systems. And, 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 and over the years, the CCP has, you know, very smartly but surreptitiously pulled back on those freedoms. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what brought, I think that's why the extradition treaty triggered this among people who are not radical. 
radicals as freedoms. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what brought, I think that's why the extradition treaty triggered this among people who are not radicals. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really brought out, to me, what was so impressive was the middle class among people who are not radicals. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really brought out, to me, what was so impressive was the middle class among people who are not radicals. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really brought out, to me, what was so impressive was the middle class among people who are not radicals. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really brought out, to me, what was so impressive was the middle class of Hong Kong. You know, having spent many years in Hong Kong and owned businesses in Hong Kong and know Hong Kong pretty well, you can't get a more apolitical person in the world than in Hong Kong pretty well. You can't get a more apolitical person in the world than in Hong Kong. It's just not a very political place. People are there. It's work-oriented. It's business-oriented. It's family-oriented. Um, and it's, uh, you know, the focus is not politics. Mm -hmm. This whole situation has been politicized by the CCP, the middle class of Hong Kong. The ones that have come out and supported this yesterday, the 1.7 million people. That would be the equivalent in the United States, I think, of something like 50 or 60 million people coming out for a protest. It'd be, you know, some extraordinary number of people. Percentage-wise. Percentage-wise, it'd be, this would be a percentage poll. Yesterday, the 1.7 million people. That would have been politicized by the CCP, the middle class of Hong Kong. The ones that have come out and supported this yesterday, the 1.7 million people. That would be the equivalent in the United States, I think, of something like 50 or 60 million people coming out for a protest. It'd be, you know, some extraordinary number of people. Percentage wise. Percentage wise, it'd be, this would be a massive, I mean, 1.7 million people on an island of 7 million yeah. is pretty, and, and people forget. Go look at the tape. This was like a monsoon type rainstorm. I mean, this was quite uncomfortable the entire time. It was a torrential rain. So a beautiful day. You could have had many, many more. Um, no. Seems but, like every.